Hey everyone, it's Juno with Detour Shirts. In this video, I'm gonna do another design tutorial and I've asked a bunch of you on YouTube, which one of these four did you want me to do? And most of you picked New York. So I'm gonna show you how I did this New York design that I did recently. Uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it with ChatGPT, going there first, getting the sticker, upscaling it, cutting out the background, and then doing all the extra stuff in Affinity Designer. Now, if you don't have Affinity Designer, you could use Inkscape, you could use Illustrator. Those are pretty similar to what I'm gonna be doing in uh, in Affinity Designer. I'm not gonna do anything too hard. It's mainly gonna be text and uh, cutting out stuff and hiding stuff. I'll show you how to erase things and, and things like that. Lots of good uh, Illustrator or Affinity Designer tips in, in this video uh, that you probably could do with Illustrator or, or Inkscape as well. So let's get into ChatGPT first. I'll show you all the prompts I use for this New York uh, or this Apple design. The prompt was Apple, but I went for Big Apple for New York. And you can see all the prompts I use for this. And then I'll show you all the steps step by step. All right, so step one is actually picking your topic. So with Design with Detour, I have many of you know this, I have this uh, prompts for every day. And one of the days that I picked was Apple. So this is uh, the full list right here for February. I'm gonna do one for every day of the year but you wanna have that topic first before you come into ChatGPT and just start typing randomly. So this really helps, the prompt really helps kind of have you decide what you're gonna be prompting. Okay, so now that you have the topic, Apple, I came in here, uh, you'll see this happy, happy Apple one. I'm gonna scroll all the way up so you can see. So step two is actually writing the prompt, right? So you can see my prompts are really simple. Uh, it says happy cartoon Apple with its hands up in the air, pretty easy. Now, a lot of people have asked like, how do you know what to write for the prompt? How do you know to actually do a cartoon apple? Well, um, I've done t-shirts for a long time, so I kind of know what, what things sell and what don't, but you could go to the internet, uh, look up Apple t-shirts, or you could go to Pretty Merch or Redbubble or TeePublic or Etsy or whatever, and look up Apple t-shirts and kind of get an idea of what's selling right now. Are there cartoon apples? Are there Apples with other things, how, how do they use apples and what kind of apple kind of design sell. Now you don't want to copy them exactly, but you want to help them uh, use those to kind of brainstorm on what kinds of things are, are cool. So sometimes I've seen apple pie t-shirts, for example. So um, pie day is coming up, 3.14, uh, March 14th, right? So uh, I thought, why not make an apple pie t-shirt with pie in the apple? So I came up an apple with a pie simple in the middle of it. This came out pretty good, but I wanted it kind of more etched in instead of just on it. So I said, can you make it look like a pie symbol is etched in? And it did. I just don't like that right there. I think that could have been done better. So I asked it to do more vector shape, not more of a real apple. <laughs> it gave me this, yes, but more vector art. Whoa. Uh, so I, I stopped there. I liked how it etched it in, but I don't know why it etched the whole apple. It's kind of weird. And so that gave me the idea, well, I etched a pie in it, why not etch a, a design in it, or a city in this case. So I thought a silhouette of a big red apple, uh, the top half of the edges is the silhouette of New York cityscape, because I know big apple, New York City, so I thought it would be really cool. Now, a lot of people also ask me, like, what is that uh, chat GPT prompt that you put in your post? It's this. So when I come in here and I hit I here, this is the post that, uh, chat GPT is writing to Dolly 3 so that Dolly 3 can output this. So this is the longer prompt that I didn't write, but chat PTT did on my behalf so that Dolly 3 can post this. So that, those are the two prompts that I always share mine, which is usually really small. You can see just like a full sentence, not even a sentence, just a thought here. And then from that chat GPT wrote this whole long thing, you know, kind of thinking what I might be thinking. Sometimes it matches, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it's really nice. So uh, I'm gonna close that. So the next step after this is to upscale it. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna download this right here, hit download, and I'm gonna bring it into dgb.lol. Now there's lots of other places that you can upscale. I'll put my video right here if you haven't seen it. I, I go over seven different ways. The reason why I'm gonna do uh, dgb.lol is because it can make it bigger, six times bigger. Uh, but I'm gonna have to wait just a little bit. So I'll show you how that all works with dgb.lol. So step three is upscaling. So we're here, dgb.lol, and I'm just gonna hit get started here, and we're gonna click image upscaler, just like that. And we're gonna drag in that one that we downloaded. 
just drag it in like this and then we're gonna hit uh, 6x right here and I'm gonna hit submit now I've already done it so I'm gonna skip over to what you would see after you hit submit you're gonna see this right here so here it is it finished 11 minutes ago I actually did it a while ago and you can hit download so click to my files it's gonna show a thing that says my files and use that and then download it so we're going to download this and the next step is to now that it's upscaled six times i need to remove the background so i'm going to go into affinity photo because i have that you could use photo p you could use photoshop any one of those would work we're just going to remove the background so that we can use it on our design so once you have this six times uh, in your downloads the upscaled version you're just going to go here and drag it into affinity photo and drop it in there all right so here we are in affinity photo uh, you can see it did it right here. It's uh, you. If you want to see the size, you can click on this right here, the crop tool, and you notice it says six one four four. That's six times the ten twenty four. So it is bigger, um, and we're gonna delete the background. So the way you can do that is to click on this uh, magic wand tool. I call it the magic wand tool, but it's actually called a flood select tool. So click on that. I have the tolerance here at 20%. I'm gonna click on the white here and I can hit backspace or delete. You notice it's gone now. And I can click this one right here and also go delete that. Now I also wanna delete the black uh, part of the cityscape. I think that will give it a good look. So I'm gonna do the, uh, just select the black here. Now you can see it's not, it's selecting more than just the black. That's because my tolerance is too high at 20%. So I'm gonna bring it down to 10% and do it again, Command D to unselect that and then select this again. And you notice that is what I'm wanting. I want that just the black. So I'm gonna hit delete on this one and you notice there's a, like a slight line right here. So what I can do now is take my erase tool and erase that. So here's my erase brush. I'm gonna click on that and I'm just gonna come in here and just go over it nicely like this. Now it may be hard to see because of the checkerboard. So one tip that you can do is, I'm gonna move myself here, is add a uh, layer and bring it down below the background. Fill it with something, you know, uh, not white so that you can see, because if you're looking at white outlines on white, you won't see it. So I like to do like this medium cyan here. Do my bucket right here. It's called, um, I call it the bucket. I can't remember what it's actually called. So I'm gonna just, fill it right here and you can see it's filled below now if i zoom in i'm gonna move myself back here if i zoom in i can see some of these lines here that i may want to take out so i'm going to use my erase tool again erase brush go back to my background and kind of just do that right um now i'm going to zoom back out move around with my hand tool And maybe, maybe right here, maybe I wanna do that. Cut it right there. So I can go in and kinda of make sure I didn't miss anything and it looks like I didn't. And so now I can save this. So um, I'm gonna get rid of this background, this blue one, cause that was just for being helpful. And now I can crop this. So I'm gonna go to crop tool and then it's gonna crop this down. Move it up and crop this down. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna double click it. This is what we want. We're gonna export this as a PNG file, export PNG, uh, that's good size, and export. So I'm gonna save this as Apple uh, NYC and hit save and it's gonna save to my desktop. And then I'm gonna use this in Affinity Designer and put some text around it and uh, other stuff to finish up the design. All right, so here we are in Affinity Designer. I made an artboard that's 4,500 by 5,400. You can see right here in my transform. I'm also brought in my finished one so we can see kind of before and after so we don't get lost here. Um, but you don't, I actually don't need this. I'm just doing this for the tutorial. So I'm gonna show you uh, what I do. I'm gonna bring in the Apple NYC that we did. Just drag it in, drop it right here. And you can see it's a lot bigger than we need. So I'm gonna just make it a little smaller. Now I can make the background black here, just so we have it. And you can see this is the kind of the effect we were going for. The city is showing uh, in black on it. Uh, and even if we did like 
like a gray. The city is kind of in front of it. See that? That's the effect we're going for. No matter what the color, the city is that color, the front color. So I think that would work good on like a dark blue. Um, that would be really cool too. Uh, it wouldn't work nice on like light colors. So for like white, it, it doesn't really do well. But for black or dark colors, I think it does does really well. So we're going to set this at black here. But one of the downsides of having this black is that this is not standing out. So you can see uh, I colored it here and uh, actually didn't color it, I actually traced it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I use my pen tool and just come in here and just trace over it. So now that I have this like this, um, this is just a fun exercise for the pen tool, right? Come in here and go all over it. And basically what you're doing is just making this same shape and that's going to put it over the top of it. So once I've done that, I'm going to color that green and I'm also going to do this circle here uh, and color that black or whatever color. So now that that part of the design is going to be vector. All right, so there you go. Now I can color this whatever green I want, um, make it that green and I can make this color whatever on. I have it red, dark, kind of a darker red, but I could make it black if I wanted to whatever. So now that, that part's vector. This part's still not vector, but I'm kind of mixing the vector and the graphic or the pixel side. Okay, so next thing you'll notice is I have New York, New York, New York. So I'm just going to go to my text tool here, click on it, type in New York. Uh, I want to select all of this and make that white. So come in here, white. And I'm going to make it bigger. And I spelled it wrong, but I'm going to use um, bows varsity right there and take up that and make a space and just make it fill the, the spot here there you go now one thing you can do if you I'm going to zoom in here if you don't like that space in here double click on it hold option and left arrow and you can see I can bring this kind of closer together um, I like doing that just because it, it always gives it a little more space than you actually need I think um, I can bring it in closer. All right, so got that New York like that. Um, and we can use all caps. There we go. I think that's what was um, doing the other line because New York is a city and so it was asking me to capitalize the city. All right, so once we got that there, we're going to do another one, but in outline mode. So I'm going to do it like this. Now you could do the outline uh, with the FX, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this outline here. So I'm going to switch it. You can see now it's not fill, it's outline or line. And I'm going to make my um, design thicker or my, my stroke a little thicker. Not that thick, maybe right there like that. I think I'm using five, five, five point five in this case. And I'm just going to move it up closer. Now I'm going to be able to also um, copy this. So I'm going to hit option, click on it, drag and copy this down like here. We just need those two right there. And these are going to go in the back. So I'm going to hit back. In fact, all of these should go in the back of the Apple. So I'm going to click right here, move to back. And there we go, move to back. Um, I also have New York down here. So I'm just going to take this solid New York, hold down option, click on it, drag it down here. Now this big apple um, is a different font. I'll show you what that is. I'm going to drag it, do this, type in the big, actually let's do the font first. Uh, come here. It's this one, Ballet Harmony. And let's make sure we have all the right fonts. So uh, just capital T capital B and A-P-P-L-E. Okay. Now I'm going to size it and I want to kind of sandwich it, kind of angle it to give it some interest. And I'm going to make it kind of over the apple like this. See how it over New York and I'm going to color it red. There we go. Now, the difference is here, I have this kind of a black outline shadow so that it doesn't 
go over it. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to hit Command J and you'll see on the layers here what I'm doing. The big apple, this is the bottom one. I'm going to add a black outline. And I'm going to make that black outline bigger. And there you go. You see that? That's kind of cutting into it right here. So that's great. So we want to cut into that New York here. And the uh, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's happening. So you can see it's over the black, but that's not the background. We don't want it black. We actually want it to erase the New York. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that New York, this one right here, uh, and group it with this black outline right here. So let me move my face. This New York right here, this big apple right here, we're going to group those two together. Group. And then this black one right here, we're going to erase. See that? So it basically just erased that black outline from the top of that New York. So that's a really cool tip there. Now you don't have that black line. It's actually just knocked out. Now you can do the same thing with uh, some of these other ones. The next thing I wanted to show you is this texture right here. So I got these textures online. I'll put the link right here. You can go online and look for some free ones. I actually have a video on, on where these are. So I'll put the link to that video here. So I'm going to just drag one in so you can see what it looks like. So this is what the texture looks like. Uh, when I put it over it, you'll notice that's what it does. It kind of gives that same effect here, right? So we're going to put this effect on all of it. Again, we don't want this black outline, but we want this black to be knocked out from everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to group everything here, right? So all of this is grouped now like that. You'll see it. And then we're going to put this on top of it. You'll see it right there. And we're going to group both of those group and command G group. And then we're going to take this right here and we just do erase, right? So now what that does is if we change the background color to something else, you'll notice those, those black things are erased. Now we don't want it this color, but we may want it this red color and then it just knocks it out, right? Um, or we may want it black and then it just shows the black or maybe we want it gray. And you notice that it does it just like that. It just knocks all of it out. So when you go zoom in here, you can see it does kind of give that crackly effect. So there you go. Um, pretty finished product here. Um, really simple. Uh, now you can come in here and change th this color if you don't like the leaf or that, or you can change the color of New York, New York. All of those other things are vectors. The only thing you can't really change the color of is the main Apple NYC. Now you could do that if you changed it to a vector and all of these was vectors, but I wanted to show you a different way to do it with upscaling and not using a, a vector or vectorizing your artwork. Now, if you vectorized your artwork, you could have came in here and kind of colored these things as well. But uh, this is another way. It's just as I think it's just as good. If you come in here, you can see it's pretty clean. We have like some of these light outlines, but with this distress thing, I don't I don't think it's going to matter too much here. So. Um, yeah, have fun with this. Hopefully all these tips work for you. Now you can know how to make your own. Uh, you can use this and do maybe other city shirts, maybe not use an apple here, but use some other cityscape. I think that would, that would look well. It doesn't necessarily have to be in an apple for a city t-shirt and a lot of cities have different nicknames. You can, you can put that in there. I think you could do a lot of, uh, different things with this style of design, especially with the grunge look and the distressed, um, knockout style. So there you go. That's my tutorial for the New York design or the Apple design with New York, New York in it. Uh, hopefully you learned a lot of different tips and tricks. I wanted to do this one to help you learn how to upscale your design and how to use that in a different way, uh, as well as creating vectors with your design in Affinity Designer. You can add vectors on top of your design, which kind of adds a, a different uh, layer on it and can make you so that you can color. So it's, things are kind of vector and kind of not vector. You also learned how to do the knockout with the outline and as well as knocking out uh, with the distress uh, texture. I think all of those can be helpful in different 
uh, ways of designing your t-shirts. If you want to see another video like this, I, I did this one right here as kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial, but with vectorizing, if you haven't seen that one, let me know in the comments if there's other designs that you've seen of mine that you want tutorials on. I'm happy to do these uh, and show you step-by-step -step on how I do it from beginning all the way to the end. Thanks again for watching. And as always, guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one.